Um, Peace Pandemic started while I was in university uh, at Notre Dame, and it was a culmination of my passions, with, uh, with soccer being a big passion in my life, clearly, and uh, the other passion is, is nonviolence and peace studies, and um, that was my concentration, and one of my concentrations in, in university. And so, with the help of some of my professors, some of my classmates, um, I had a vision of what I kind of wanted to do, uh, making a hybrid organization of of uh, the culmination of peace and, and inclusion with football and um, it, it basically blossomed in 2010 into Peace Pandemic and I decided to incorporate it as an official nonprofit and, uh, and now basically what uh, the mission is is um, we like to, uh, my wife and I go uh, around the world and we, we basically um, teach football but with the emphasis to boys um, and girls separately, boys being um, non-violence against women and you know the treatment of women and to, to the girls that we work with we really want to empower them into uh, believing that they can be something different than just a mother in life or just you know um, a lot of girls that we've worked with are sex slaves and so um, it's, it's that kind of culmination between uh, football and empowerment that uh, we really believe that, that that football has that connection that uh, that can really change the world and um, change the lives of not only little boys and little girls but uh, you know adults as well I think um, that's where my passion and that's where my vision was and in India what we really ran across was a lot of malnutrition um, the poor treatment of girls and women uh, the the gender gap that is is there is um, it's shocking, and so uh, you know coming back from that trip where um, we met a lot of great organizations, a lot of great people who are doing amazing things, um, we really wanted to focus and narrow our vision down to how can football help uh, not only these young girls, but it it in fact helped it it helps the boys who. A lot of boys are um, victims of violence themselves when they're young, and it's a cycle. So the violence continues. They end up um, using violence against their family members, and and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's um, we we want to break that cycle. We want to break that um, that kind of uh, cycle of violence. But you know, there's so much to be done. There's so many girls and boys out there who are starving. There's so many, um, you know sex slavery, everything that, that I think soccer can help and I think if more men, especially male athletes, get on the, um, get on, you know, social media and, and, and really, because I know a lot of men do believe this, I know a lot of, you know, men in the impact, they, a lot of these guys, they believe that, you know, it's never right to hit a woman, it's never right to tell women that they can't be something and it's, uh, I think it just takes, uh, some more people to, to stand up and to say that uh, to young boys this is this is what's right and this is what's wrong and for girls you know I think their struggle is is ongoing and um, whatever you know men can do to to help that is it, it's going to be positive. She was really the one who when we went to India when she spoke with the girls when she has um, you know Kaylin has a uh, medical background so talking to these girls about um, you know their, their menstrual cycles and to, you know the female anatomy um, she came across some horrific things and so that really impacted her and she told me the stories and um, you know we would be in a taxi ride from the slums back to uh, back to where we we're staying and, and she'd be in tears the whole way because she just couldn't fathom how this is happening in this in this world you know it's 2012 and Yes, this December we'll be going to Guatemala. Uh, we'll be staying uh, in Guatemala City for the majority of the time. And uh, we, we got set up with uh, a Notre Dame alumni um, group called the Hands Organization. And they, they've been doing a fantastic uh, job with setting up itineraries and, and connecting us with orphanages down there. So um, they uh, will be visiting about 600 kids. Um, that's the, that's the tentative plan right now. And six, uh, about just over a week, and uh, two two sessions a day with boys, separate from girls. And then uh, we'll we'll buy the children each T-shirts, each a ball, 
and uh, we'll have some fun with the football and you know kind of get on the on the same pitch I guess and in, in a way and then uh, then we'll talk with them after after each session and and kind of get feedback and you know these these children they've seen more than you know a lot of adults in this world and they've seen a lot of pain and a lot of suffering and really the, the football is the fun the football is they just want to get out they want to kick a ball and um, that's what I want to do just just to, to get them out on the field and have fun but then you know uh, I think bringing in a perspective of uh, like uh, this professional athlete and this uh, this successful woman wants wants to you know empower you guys to, to go out and achieve your goals and uh, whatever we can do to help that I think it's fantastic and um, I, I know that the organizations that we'll be working with down there, the orphanages, they, you know, day in and day out are, are living this and, and they're doing great stuff. So we're just, we're, ba we're basically coming in to help and, and to do whatever we can. And we'll, we know we'll be working with a lot of malnutrition kids. And uh, so that's going to, it's always, it always tugs on your heartstrings. But, uh, you know, you have to go down there and, and, you know, know what you're getting into and, and not think that you have all the solutions in your back pocket and, and just listen and, I think I'll do more listening on these trips than, uh, than talking, so.